Hello everyone. Today we will talk about summer care of roses and what to feed in this hot summer. So these are the condition of roses and here you can see artistic creation of leaf cutter. This year that leaf cutter is showing its artistry in more of the roses and here his nest rested on one of the stem of the rose. So first thing uh, we have to do to protect our roses from over 40 degree temperature that we have to do grouping of our roses so that roses are not exposed from all side to sunlight so it will give each other some shade and they can going along this difficult time Second uh, important thing is you have to water frequently and properly. For that I have installed drip system and uh, also uh, installed a timer with it. So that I can schedule watering on my roses when I am away from home. Uh, that watering can be taken care by this drip irrigation system. I have separate video on it. Uh, I will give link uh, here uh, in the description. So the roses on cinder media you have to at least water twice a day morning and evening and the showering also you can do in the morning and evening and uh, some uh, people have time then they can do in between also to keep the moisture level uh, in the roses. Roses are still in growth phase and some blooms are still there but the bloom quality is not uh, top class I can say as the temperature is hovering around 40 degrees and the third important aspect in summer is mulching. I have used this coco coir disc as a mulch in all my potted roses and I have installed in some and I will do 100% in coming days. So it will keep the media cool and moist and watering is required less frequently and I have seen the benefit more in uh, soil uh, media roses than cinder media. So mulching is very important uh, please do it as early as possible either uh, coco coir disc or you can use wood chips or uh, clay ball also. I have uh, make a separate video on it. Uh, I have posted uh, some time ago and a link I will provide here also. You can also use rice or uh, wheat straw or grass straw as a mulching material. Pupils are more interested about this what we feed in our roses. So fertilizers are important component in rose growing particularly when your roses are in pots and micronutrients are also required in some quantity to maintain the healthy roses. I will also share the schedule of fertilizers, micronutrients 
and insecticides I have given in the month of April. But before that we have to understand the concept of NPK, the basic element of fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And I will take here some more time to explain it so that you have to fertilize your roses properly. So let us talk about first nitrogen. Actually plant need nitrogen in more quantity than phosphorus or potassium. Uh, one of the reason is that nitrogen is more mobile and it is consumed to make protein in plant's cell. So it is the building block of your plant you can say. So that nitrogen normally we give in roses are either in ammonium form or nitrate form. But uh, here you can see many video that some of the rosarian will say that plant will absorb only nitrate form and they are right in a sense because plant absorb both ammonium and nitrate from root zone. That plants are having nitrate and ammonium absorption channel and it will go to their leaves and into cells and ultimately that plant convert ammonium to nitrate and finally nitrate will be assimilated by plant. So if you give nitrate nitrogen then it will be assimilated immediately and it will go to cell. But if you are giving ammonium then first it will absorb through ammonium absorption channel and it will go to cell then it will convert it to nitrite then nitrate then it will be absorbed. So some energy is consumed here and it is a slow process then nitrate. But if you want better growth of the plant we have to use both the channel of uh, roses in root zone ammonium and nitrate channel. So that plant growth will be optimum proper Ammonium nitrogen is also uh, converted to nitrate in root zone by microbial activity. If it is converted to nitrite then it will be absorbed through uh, nitrate uh, channel. Now let us talk about phosphorus. Actually phosphorus is least required by plant in this three of the major component N, P and K and in TC culture analysis it is required very less as compared to nitrogen and potassium. So whatever we are feeding or in feeding cycle we have to supplement less phosphorus than nitrogen or potassium. So normally uh, commercial grower are maintaining 3, 1, 2 NPK ratio. 3 part nitrogen, 1 part phosphorus and 2 part potassium. And even less uh, phosphorus you can give. If you are giving more phosphorus particularly in soil media then it will deposited in soil in higher concentration and phosphorus will ultimately replace magnesium, calcium and iron. 
and particularly in summer time uh, you can see leaf chlorosis and uh, one of the reason is over feeding of this phosphorus apart from genuine iron deficiency or uh, higher pH. So phosphorus is not required in more quantity I can say but lot of video you are seeing that they are prescribing most more phosphorus then that may be true for cinder media but not for soil media. So you have to be careful while you are giving phosphorus to the plant. Basically phosphorus is required for root growth and uh, when you are pruning or just before pruning you can give higher dose of phosphorus in root zone. Third component in NPK is K that is potassium and it is uh, essential for overall growth of the roses. Nitrogen is for top growth and phosphorus for root growth and potassium for overall growth. So after nitrogen we have to give potassium more than phosphorus but less than nitrogen. So that 3 1 2 ratio is largely nitrogen in medium level potassium and least quantity one is for phosphorus. This potassium is very essential for overall growth and it makes the plant very hardy and robust because if you give excess nitrogen or nitrate nitrogen that will make plant bit softer side and more prone to insect attack or fungal attack and when you are giving potassium to plant it helps to convert the nitrogen to protein and it will be assimilated by plant. So soft growth will become harder and least prone to insect and fungal attack. So potassium is very essential and also potassium uh, make that cell wall and cell membrane very hardy and robust to insect or any disease attack. Potassium is also helps uh, plant to make many enzyme and enzyme related function and in a sense it works as a catalyst for enzyme production. So it is uh, overall um, health of the plant is uh, affected by this enzyme. So if uh, proper potassium is available then health of the plant will be better. And one of the important function that is required in summer time that helps in by potassium is that it regulate the water retention in plants. And it is regulated by opening and closing of stomata of the plant. And this uh, potassium helps in opening and closing up this stomata. If uh, potassium deficiency is there then that function will be affected and either it water loss is more or water retention is will be more. So that will harm the plant. So it is very essential in summer time. After NPK 
दैट माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स आर आल्सो रिक्वायर्ड बाय प्लांट सो बेसिकली एनी प्लांट नीड 17 एसेंशियल कंपोनेंट फॉर इट्स ओवरऑल ग्रोथ एंड प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग अप सो माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स आर कम्स इन मेनी कॉम्बिनेशंस सो आई एम यूजिंग कॉम्बी टू कॉम्बिनेशन अलॉन्ग विथ सीविड टू कैटर द नीड फॉर दिस माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स एंड सीविड आल्सो कंटेन सम ह्यूमिक फुलविक एसिड एंड नेसरी एमिनो एसिड्स विच विल बी एडेड बेनिफिट सो इन रोटेशन आई एम गिविंग कॉम्बी टू प्लस सीविड लिक्विड बट सीविड लिक्विड यू हैव टू गिव वन सीन एवरी फिफ्टीन डेज एंड आई रिमाइंड यू दैट वेन यू गिव सीविड इट विल मेक योर प्लांट वेरी सॉफ्ट एंड प्रोन टू लीव बर्न एंड इंसेक्ट अटैक so don't give frequently give once in every 15 days or longer and combi 2 you can give every week no issue either in root zone or as a foliar application now here is a feeding schedule for april if you are growing rose then you have to keep track on your feeding and any medicine or fungicide given here you can see that in first week i have given tap seaweed takat and uh, then 13045 plus ammonium sulfate 2100 plus micronutrient then i have done ph amendment about 5 ph and then gave this red mill as some rain was there then i have give calcium nitrate plus boron these two are better work in combination then this oberan that medicine for mites then again i have given 13045 plus chelated iron then ammonium sulfate 2100 plus epsom salt then i have given again calcium nitrate then kaka this is insecticide ph amendment and micronutrients were also given and this third week again dap takat then ammonium sulfate plus 13045 plus epsom salt then again calcium nitrate and boron in combination then this ph amendment was also done in fourth week plus micronutrient plus mycorrhiza i have given mycorrhiza uh, also here and i have seen some video that people are telling that don't do ph amendment when you are giving mycorrhiza it will kill the mycorrhiza fungi so it is not true mycorrhiza is growing very fast if you maintain ph 5.2 to 6 so don't worry you can amend ph also here then lastly i have gave dap so the trend you have seen here that i have given maximum nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus i have gave in lesser quantity 
and I have maintained also ammonium nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen combination. So you have to maintain normally 3 1 2 ratio in soil media. Soil media that you can extend uh, uh, this frequency more or you can give weekly or in 4 to 5 days but in cinder you have to um, give it more frequently because all the fertilizer will run to waste so whatever is captured in root zone that will be absorbed by plant so if it is more then it will not harm the plant as it will harm in soil media one more thing that ammonium nitrogen like ammonium sulfate don't give more than 20 percent that is the upper limit uh, in summer you can also maintain 10 percent of uh, this nitrogen feed the reason for that is that plant absorb nitrate nitrogen better in hot weather in summer months than ammonium so nitrate nitrogen is preferred as temperature rises above 40 degrees so you have to limit DAP and calcium nitrate feed to a lesser quantity or less frequent and uh, mostly you feed 13.045 or 21.00 along with micronutrients and seaweed and humic acid also you can give in between particularly in soil media another question will come that how much fertilizer we have to feed quantity wise so uh, thumb rule is that 400 ppm of nitrogen per week you can divide that either one part or two part per cinder or in soil, soil media you can give in weekly or in every 15 days how to uh, get that ppm value just multiply your npk ratio uh, written in the packet per gram to 10 and uh, add uh, that uh, fertilizer to 1 liter water that will give desired 400 ppm value so ammonium sulfate give 2 gram per liter and 13045 you can go up to 3 gram per liter and if you drench that 1 liter water in one plant then that will provide 400 ppm to that plant if you are giving half liter water then that will be 200 ppm then you can give it twice a week that will be the ppm value of fertilizer suppose 2100 that is multiplied by 10 is 210 so 2 gram per week ammonium uh, sulfate you can give or 13045 130 ppm so you can give 3 gram per week similarly dap i think 18 percent nitrogen is there so 3 gram dap per week you can give but we have to maintain that 3 1 to uh, NPK ratio. Thank you for patiently watching this long video.